Hey you guys. Okay, so I have a pro die I like to share with you guys. I use it's a Sizzix scoreboard die. It's an easel. Scoreboard dies are dies that can score through mat board, chipboard, different types of board without cutting all the way through. Okay, so before I show you the sandwich that I use and how to assemble this die and the projects that I made, let me just show you how the finish easel looks. That's the back side and this is the front side. You will get a lot of usage out of this die, I promise you. And if you don't have it, you need to locate it before it's no longer available. It measures about a little over 8 inches in height and 5 inches in width. Excuse that noise, that's my dogs there. And the sandwich that you need, well, you need your base, your base tray. And then I use the adapter pad, a cutting pad, the die, of course. And then you want to have your paper face down. So I have double sided. Well, I put paper on both sides of the chipboard. And so I wanted to have this side down because I want this side to show more. So you have it face down, and then you need your crease pad. So a shout out to all the ladies who commented on my last pro um, video of the cone, Bona and Crafty, Crafty Cake 7 and special D special things. Thank you guys for your tips. It really did help, help out a lot, and um, I'm getting some really good cuts and so I appreciate that and so I'm using Recollections chipboard paper I picked up some a couple months ago but I got some the other day too because they have it on sale five for a dollar and so I'm going back tonight because I love this stuff it's a perfect weight to use your scoreboard dies with okay so to put this die together is really simple um, I'll be using hot glue because I think that's better than score tape because the board has a lot of strength to it and so you really um, need a strong adhesive and so I have paper on both sides but because I put the side that I want to face me down I am going to now make my folds you can't see the score lines are there and I really like this board by Recollections you know, I didn't have any cutting. Uh, oops. It sounded like that one um, cracked, but I guess it didn't. Well, you know, how was that? How was it when I say it, how good it's been working, I crack it. Okay, so anyway, but I'm still going to use it. And you know what? Actually, I'm, I'm going to put something there to reinforce that. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so I just added a little bit of hot glue there, but you know, I bent it too hard, so you do want to be careful, but it's still workable. So what I'm going to do is apply glue on this side and that side, and then glue it like this. Okay, so once again, hot glue I think works best, um, well, better than the score tape, because you get a stronger bond, and you need that with the chipboard or mat board. Okay, so that's how it looks thus far. Now you notice you have holes. Um, I don't know what those two holes are for. Maybe they're, you can just hang something from it. But you do have a hole. Oh darn it. Okay, so I forgot a step, people. <laughs> I always forget this. There is a hole right here. So I'm going to show you how to work around it if you also forget there's a hole back there you need to add twine through there okay now it's easier to do it before you actually glue it because then you can apply bring your string through and apply tape to hold it down but I'm gonna show you what I've been doing Ooh, my nail hurts darn it Let's see if I can pull it through so I've pulled it through now what I'm gonna add some hot glue to stabilize that that will prevent the string from coming through in the back so let that dry for a second and let me get the second piece so this isn't canvas paper but it's paper that already has sticky 
on it. So I'm just going to take it, and it really don't match, but I'm not even sure if it's long enough. But I'm just going to add it here to give it some reinforcement to help stabilize it. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, there's a hole that's right here that I didn't pop out. Okay, so I'm going to apply glue right here and put it there. So I'll be right back. Just going to position that down. Let that dry. And while that's cooling down and hardening, now I'm going to add the twine through this hole. So it's dry in here now, and as you can see, I mean, it don't look terribly bad. But once again, you can add tape. So I'm going to tie a little knot here. And then what this does is, depending on what size object you have in here, sometimes you might need to pull this back to make it stand up straighter or if you want it to lean further back. Now I have a tip for you guys. I'm going to share that with you in a second. But so this first um, project is a 12 by 12 inch heart. It's a Sizzix heart, a pro die. And I made an album page and it's sitting on the easel. There's the easel there. And because of its size and its shape, it's sitting at an angle. I kind of like that. I think that's cute. Yeah, this page was actually made with the Anna Griffith, her new paper tricks embossing folders. And so check out that video. And I show you guys how I made these different embellishments. I want to show you guys the tip because this album... It's a 12 by 12 inch album. It's chipboard, so it's you know got some weight to it. And it, so if you want to hold heavier items in your easel, this is my tip. Take a clothespin and snap it to the back of your string. It acts as an anchor. Yeah, and it keeps the your um, easel from moving without this clothespin, I would not be able to put the album in the easel. And to make it even better, you know, you can decorate your clothespin the same colors and use the same papers as you did for your project because clothespins are so hot right now. So I didn't decorate that one, but that's my tip, you guys. Yeah. Okay, so the second project, it's a card that I made. It's a shaker card, and it's called the Butt Shaker Card. <laughs> I completed the video already on how to make this shaker card, but I'm not going to post it until the recipient receives the card. And so, um, yeah, it, if you want to make quick, easy shaker cards, then you got to check out this video. But I call this technique the Butt Shaker Card. But there's the easel. Real pretty. That's the back of it. I added a reinforcement there. I didn't really need to for this particular e easel because I'm just holding a card. But isn't that cute? So lovely. So if I didn't show this to you, do you see how this top part, It's the card is snug underneath it. And I thought that was cute. I could have left it in the back too. But I think it's cute just like that. This is a, oh, I'm not sure what A size it is, but it's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper folded. These easels are so functional. They're so cute. And you can reproduce them really fast. You saw how easy it was to put together um, 
there's two holes there too. I think they're for decorative purposes. On this easel here, I just added flowers. And so if I'm wrong, someone please just, you know, leave me a message and let me know. So yeah, um, I think this is a must have die. I see a lot of use out of this one. I don't like sending envelopes. I hate to make them, but I could see myself sending these easel dies and what a great way to showcase whatever you send to someone. And it's so pretty, it's sturdy. And if you're worried about how you can send it, use a box like this. I think it's like $5. It's a small flat rate box. And the, the die, the completed die cut fits perfectly in there. So you could fit your card in there. You could fit your die in there and you send it off. So yeah, I'm going to get a lot of usage out of this die. Okay, you guys. So thank you guys for watching and do have a wonderful day.